Hi, this is Charles Evans, music director of the Long Bay Symphony. Welcome to another episode of Speaking of the Arts. Now that it's late April, we're coming to the end of our regular symphony season. A season that has been full of challenges, requiring all sorts of creative effort just to be able to continue offering live performances at all. Like most performing arts groups, we were unable to offer any live concerts for several months resorting only to the occasional online virtual performance. This past January, we launched a mini symphony series at First Presbyterian Church, which just wrapped up last week. Of those concerts, though, the first two were only live streamed. Throughout all this pandemic period, however, one aspect of the Long Bay Symphony's musical activities has continued and thrived, our Long Bay Youth Symphony program. The decision to keep the Youth Symphony active during all of this school year has truly been a blessing to our Youth Symphony students, who otherwise have had little or no opportunity for musical performance. So, I thought it would be interesting to talk with some of them about their experiences with the Long Bay Youth Symphony over this past year, as well as about their plans and aspirations for the future. Hi, I'm here now with uh several of our youth orchestra members at the end of our rehearsal for our upcoming concert and I just thought it might be a good environment to sort of assess the year, talk to some of these students about what they've been through this year and what their aspirations are for the future. So we have here a, a string quartet and uh, then added to that is a bass. You'll get a chance to hear both of these, uh, some excerpts from both of the things they'll be performing uh, in a few minutes. But we have, um, uh, I'll just introduce our group members to get that out of the way first. This is our uh, first violinist here is Isabella Yi. She's our concert master with the orchestra. And uh, we've been very fortunate that her family moved here, what, about a year and a half ago, two years ago? And so we, this is the kind of thing we uh, encounter a lot, people moving into the area looking for something like the symphony or certainly for their, for their uh, children to have, be in the, in the uh, youth symphony program. Um, then we have Gabriella Smith on the second violin and she's been, you've been with us for a while, mm -hmm. three or four, four years, I think so. something like that. Uh, but you're only, are you only a ninth grader? Yes. Yeah, so I mean you were you're very young when you got started. Uh, Isabella is eleventh grader. Then I'll just go in sort of uh, uh, sonic order. We have uh, over here on viola, Grace Leonard, who is an 11th grader, and she was all set to go to governor's school, but the conditions changed quite a bit, and so we're very fortunate, actually, that you have decided that it's kind of nice to be around here and avail yourself of all these things. And then over here on cello, if I'm not in the way, is Colin Scholl. Uh, he is uh, at Scholars Academy, uh, as well as our bass player, Lacey Tier. But uh, Colin, you're a 10th grader, is that right? Yeah. And uh, then you'll see in the back here the bass, uh, Lacey Tier, who is a senior and also um, at Scholars Academy. And uh, she will be going, I just learned, to Vanderbilt to join another former uh, bass player in the Youth Symphony, Sloan Jordan. So that will be nice. And uh, it's always good to hear about their plans. But I guess I just wanted to kind of go around the group and, and say, you know, how is your musical world different this year? Uh, what, uh, what sort of different experiences did you have and how does the Long Bay Youth Symphony fit into that? Who wants to chime in? Anyone? Um, Grace? It's been, it's been quite different this year, especially with when the pandemic started. There was a lot of online music instruction, which is quite different, sometimes not as effective. So it's been really nice having Long Bay to come and rehearse safely in chamber groups with other people. Yeah, yeah. Gabby, what about you? I mean, you've been doing, you've been doing homeschooling, right? So, uh, are there any other outlets uh, for music making that have been curtailed? And you know, I mean, last summer there was um, in Gordon at Gordon College they had a um, a virtual um, online uh, summer um, group which we could go to virtually, of course, um, and so that was like the only outlet ever since COVID started, yeah. and this has been the only real live, um, live outlet. Yeah, I think, I think that's really uh, such an important uh, 
aspect of what we're doing that I'm particularly proud of is the fact that, that we've kept going throughout this pandemic. We, we talked about it quite a bit, but decided that the students in the area really needed the outlet, and I, I think that that's certainly been the case. So, uh, Lacey, what's been your favorite part of this? I, I, would, I want to say also, this is, this is uh, one of, I said this is in, in some ways the cream of the crop here with our students because we have uh, Lacey and Colin are both uh, uh, doing the concerto, uh, they're performing as, as soloists with the orchestra uh, on Wednesday, April 28th, which is our spring concert, by the way, at Trinity Church, where we are now. And then the others of you have, have played concertos in the past. So uh, they've availed themselves of, of all types of, of uh, activities that a youth symphony provides. But, but Lacey, what is your favorite part of it? I've really been enjoying um, getting to do chamber music. You know, That's as, what I figured, yeah. yeah. As a bass player, um, options to do that are kind of few and far between. Um, and not always available, so it's been a lot of fun getting to do quintets um, and quartets in last semester's case, but I've really enjoyed doing this. Yeah, and the Dvorak piece they'll get a little sampling of. This is a particularly fun thing to do, but uh, Isabella, what's been the, the best part of it for you? Um, I think the music has really um, been the best part for me, but also just getting to be in person in orchestra again. Last year, having everything virtual, I just, I just miss everyone. I miss being in person. I miss being able to like look across and then make eye contact with the person that I'm playing with. And then just being able to be in person again this year has like really, really um, lifted my spirits again in light of the pandemic. Yeah. Well, I think we were talking about this earlier, but uh, you said you were graduating early, but what, what, what are your plans for next year? Um, for next year, I do plan to um, apply to conservatories, and I do eventually want to pursue music ultimately. Yeah, so, but the, you'll have next year to just take mm -hmm. time to do that. Yeah, that's great. Well, Colin, what's been your favorite aspect in this? Uh, I'd say definitely my favorite aspect is the community. Um, during the summer, I worked on a lot of solo repertoire, um, and my concerto being one of those, uh, which I'm very thankful for the opportunity to perform with everyone. Um, but definitely, yeah, the community aspect of it, uh, over the summer I wasn't sure that we were going to be back for the fall semester, but yeah. seeing my friends and seeing familiar faces really made it yeah. um, a lot of motivation to keep practicing and, and keep progressing in my music career, um, because so much of it is uh, playing with other people. I, I think whenever you play by yourself, it's, it's easy to lose sight, uh, but whenever you have other people to keep you accountable uh, and to have fun with it too, uh, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a social adventure, and I think uh, that's, that's been certainly an encouraging thing. The symphony itself has done performances uh, starting in, in 2021, but they've been, uh, at, at the first they were only live-streamed. Fortunately, we've been able to do our youth symphony concerts, both live-streamed and live. So if you're interested in, in tickets for uh, Wednesday, April 28th, you can get on the Long Bay Symphony website, just longbaysymphony.com, and, uh, and get those. Or we may have some left at the door. The seating is pretty limited. But the difference between starting out just doing virtual and then having an audience there in front of you, it's just night and day. It's, uh, it's, a, it's just hard to make music when no one's there to respond to it. So we're all looking forward to get back, getting back to some level of normal. But I did want to... Uh, to share some perspective, uh, let's say from, from my generation, my period, introduce an, another gentleman who's over here in the back. I don't want to, he's it, sort of crouched there. And we've tried to figure out a way to make it work with this setting. But uh, George McNally uh, moved into this area, what, about two years ago? Almost two years ago. Yeah. And he has a lot of playing experience from uh, mainly, he grew up in Florida, right? Right. Uh, in the Miami area. Sort Florida, of Florida, Miami. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then ended up in Greensboro, yep. and probably several other places in between. Yes. But it's wonderful, just uh, like we talked about, like I mentioned earlier, about students who come join the Youth Symphony. We also have uh, professional musicians who move here or retire here, and it's nice to know that we have a professional orchestra that they can be a part of. But uh, George, I just wanted, I, I thought about this in terms of your coaching 
uh, and working with the students, and, and I can't help but to separate my own youth experience, mm -hmm. you know, from what I want to impart to them. But uh, could you just explore that a little bit when you come in and coach a group like this? Like, what? How did you? What was your experience at their age? Well, it's funny when when I was uh, in the youth symphony myself, and I had coaches help me. Um, I appreciated that, but I don't know how much I appreciate it compared to now. I look back and I, I realize as a coach, I think I'm getting more out of it than they are. I, I enjoy this. Um, I think that I, I realize in my life, the longer I live, music is not for me, and I think for a lot, it's not something that's just a like, it's a need. Yeah, um, yeah I agree. It's something, something that, you know, this, you're talking about uh, online versus being in person. Being in person, I think, is, is important because we share the experience of some glorious music. And by doing that in a chamber music setting, you get a lot out of it. For me to help coach, I think I got a tremendous amount out of it too because I listened to them when we first started. The quartet, there was four. They all knew their individual parts. They all played their parts really well. And now we blend into a quartet. And that uh, is, it's, it's fun to do, it's fun to listen to, and great to be part of it. Yeah, and I know you've had a lot of orchestral experience, but also a great deal of chamber music yeah, experience. As I explained to them even earlier, that chamber music for me is the purest, truest form mm -hmm. of communication. Yeah. And then it, it, it actually, you can still think of an orchestra as a chamber music setting, because if you're sitting there playing a viola, you have your part, but you have to hear and listen to every other. Right. Well, see, that's the ideal. I mean, I, I constantly, well, not, I haven't said it in a, in a while, but you know, I, you've heard me use the term radar. Yeah. You know, that you, you have to have your radar out and, you know, perceiving everything. And I, I remember when I worked with David Zinman, uh, he, would, he would say, you know, like I'm here and do Dallas Symphony or Baltimore Symphony or something like that. And, and he would say, you know, you couldn't get something together. Just play it like chamber music, like use your ears. Because yeah. so very often, people just say, oh, I'm following the conductor. But really, the way to play in an orchestra is like you're describing. Right. You know, and, and the conductor is just making a suggestion, trying to, uh, and, and also, David Zinman used that great analogy of conducting like riding a horse. Yeah. And you don't get in the way until you need to do something different, and then you hold the reins. The rest of the time, you don't want to see someone up there doing that because your your instincts should be guiding you as far as what well, you And truthfully, as you know this, the conductor's job is is not as much in the concert. Oh, gosh. Is it, no. It's really during the rehearsal. Absolutely. Yeah. And at the concert, you're there to keep that glue. Yeah. But if exactly. people listen, use their ears, I think everything will be fine. It's, it's, that's the, that, that to me is the beauty of chamber music. You mentioned eye contact. In, in music, and I love that. You look around, and in, in, the, in the symphony, I do that as well. And I think it's important because we all now are communicating, and it's shown in our performance. Yeah, but it, it is really enjoyable. I, I remember one time when I was at the Blossom Music Center, you know, outside of Cleveland, and it was during my, my undergraduate uh, days, and we went out to hear them play, I, I don't know which Beethoven symphony it was, I think it was the third. And about five minutes before the piece was over, the lights went out. And they finished the piece. <laughs> that's how well they knew that. Oh, yeah. Of I mean, that's so macho. I mean, that oh, is yeah. like, wow. You know, they're such professionals. Yeah. But I mean, I think that's the important thing. I, I, what I'm most proud of is that we're a conduit for students like you guys who are pursuing this. So as far as, uh, and it's, it's fine either way, but I'm just curious. Like, you've already stated that you want to be in music. And, of course, Gabby, you've got a little time as a ninth grader, but uh, are you planning to go into music or utilize it as, a, as part of your life? Um, I'm not planning to go in professionally. I'm more interested in the medical aspect mm -hmm. of life. Um, but I do, I, I would love to have music be a big part in my life my whole life. Well, it, it is in your family, because now, yeah, your grandfather, whom I just met recently, mm -hmm. uh, was concertmaster, which orchestra? I'm not sure. Just, but, but orchestra's up, uh, uh, yeah, where, in Colorado. Where, in Colorado, okay, yeah. okay. And where, where did you move here from? Was it? Charleston um, and then Colorado. No, but you, I thought you were a, a Midwesterner, by, or is that just your mom? Mm -hmm. no. Oh, okay, all right, well that's, mm -hmm. That's how I, I, I kind of got that wrong. So Lacey, we already know, you, you want a double major, right? Yes. I mean, you're going to do 
Are you going to get a music performance degree? No, I plan to um, major in just bachelor of musical arts, um, you know, just a music degree, uh -huh. and then I'm going to be double majoring um, at Vanderbilt with human and organizational development, and go on their health and human services track and do like a pre-therapy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And Grace, what are your thoughts? Of course, you were going to go to governor's school, yeah. so I kind of get an idea that that's what you wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, my plans are, first off, to hopefully get into an amazing music performance program. And I'm also considering doing something in the administration or educational route, because mm -hmm. I, I believe one of the biggest problems in this world is education equality. So if I can combine that with performance and do and work in that route as well, especially music edu ed education, that would be, I would love to do that. Hmm. I think I've got an idea for you. We'll talk about that oh. later as we're, we're uh, initiating some, some things like that through the symphony. So I never thought about it, but uh, anyway. So Colin, I know you've got a lot on your plate. I, you probably are, are you in the uh, aspiring to a medical career? Um, kind of, uh, I have a, a large passion for psychology and I, I find uh, my mental illness very interesting. And I think there's a lot of overlay between uh, the effects of music and just that kind of serotonin and social aspect as we discussed previously and uh, you know, kind of combating anxiety and depression. So one of my biggest goals, and I also love like foreign languages and like learning about different cultures is to uh, teach in China, like teach music, uh, but also use it as a way to um, combat yeah, anxiety, depression, um, all of those kind of mental illnesses. So you could say music therapy, yeah, yeah. definitely, but I don't know if a music therapy degree is exactly what I'm Plan to, yeah, plan to do. you plan to keep playing though? Of course, oh, of yeah. course, yeah. yeah. I think it just means so much. I think there's less and less of that. In fact, I saw something on, on PBS about they had, it was uh, the Philadelphia Orchestra and they had, uh, yeah, did you see that? Yeah. Uh -huh. And they're, you know, all these famous musicians are talking about how, you know, the, even in Europe, the, the music uh, education is going down so much. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, so vitally important, even for students who aren't going into music, to have had this experience uh, of working with other musicians and understanding. I, I think, it, to me, with, with my kids, uh, I drive home the point all the time, it's not, it doesn't matter exactly what you do, I mean, you just happen to be playing piano or violin, but you're problem solving the whole time. Like you, you, you can play a five minute piece, but there's one minute over to 30 seconds of it that you can't play. So how do you solve that equation? How do you go in and, and make that right? And I think that organizes your brain like nothing else. It's just yeah. abstract and, and, and wonderful. And so I, you know, I'm so proud that we have this vehicle here for all the students, not just students like you who are primarily, you know, having an, some interest in music, whether it's music performance or related. Uh, but even for the students who will never do it again, they will go to symphony concerts, and there's just no comparison. Speaking of which, I was just curious, Colin, with what you had said, what's your, who's your favorite composer? Uh, that's a really tough question. I think it's dependent on whoever I'm playing at the moment. Yeah. Uh, well, right now it's the war job, yeah. because I'm, I'm, I'm listening to all the intricate details and, and methodical thoughts that he put into these pieces and, and how all the parts you know, kind of blend together, and I just, I. I have to give him props. <laughs> He's definitely one of the greatest. Um, yeah, yeah. I also respect a lot of like um, trendsetters and pioneers, such as Stravinsky. Yeah. Um, I think that he was a visionary for his time. Um, Bartok. And, yeah, I was just going to say Bartok. I, I, oh. yes. Good stuff. So what, who's your favorite? Um, this is a pretty nerdy answer. But um, I... You're not going to say off my story. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I... As I practice more and more Bach, I realize how genius oh, it is. Oh, well, yeah, you're right and about that. I just appreciate how he is able to convey every single emotion with something that looks so simple. And also, as soon as I practice that, I'll go and practice my concerto or sonata and play it with like 10 times more musicality. Yeah. So I love him so much for that aspect, and I love listening to his works. Yeah. But I'm also a huge sucker for Sibelius. I love Sibelius. Oh, Sibelius, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, yeah, <laughs> he, he's about, he moves too slowly for me. I just oh, like I step, you yeah, know. It's like he he true. lives in Finland or something, you know. <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, it's it's very cold and icy. There's some beautiful things, but uh, yeah, you, you're a Savelli's fan too. Oh, uh, I don't know if I there's 
lot of composers that I don't find a lot of amazing works that they've done. So I don't know if there's a, a favorite composer of mine. I, I hear what Grace is saying, and I think it's, it is ingenious the way Bach wrote his music, especially with strings, that when you, you actually hear the piece in a, in a bigger format, you can hear that in the individual notes, it forms the overtones of a beautiful sound. If you listen to those overtones, not just the music, he thought well beyond just the pitch you hear. Oh, yeah. It's an amazing thing. So, but I don't know if I can sit there and say I have a favorite composer. It's yeah, I know. I know. That's, that is, it is. But I, it, yeah, I couldn't answer that either. But a, you know, a favorite. You know, that's, I, I wrote music and music theory. I can tell you who my least favorite composer is. <laughs> yeah. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Babbitt, something like that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mention names. There are probably yeah. some that I don't <laughs> Yeah. Well, an interesting fact of, of, of these students, too, is that uh, they came in and played as part of our uh, Baroque concert back in February. We always try to do uh, a pairing up of, of some of our uh, top students in the youth symphony to be performers in a regular symphony concert. And even under COVID, with smaller forces, we still work that out. But I thought of that because we played some Vivaldi. And, and of course, the water music is nice, too. But you play a Bach piece, it's totally different. That, that overture to the, you know, to the orchestral suite, is, it's just like, how did someone know that and could do that? It's just so, it is, it's so much, it's almost like, like a, you know, a, a rabbi or a priest. Or, it's just somebody who seems to know how everything works. And he so wasn't copying anybody. No. There wasn't a lot before him that he really copied from coming. Well, yeah, I mean, he did. But you know, he, he copied a lot of Italians, but he, then he made it, made it better. Yeah. He, he, like, got more intense with things. But, uh, Lacey, what's your, how's, it, how's this? I'll limit the playing field. What was the favorite piece you played with the youth center? That limits the playing field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, because we, yeah, um, we're not doing, we're not doing any Prokofiev for. for okay, you know. uh, for the entire time or? The yeah, season? the entire time. <laughs> like what piece sticks um, out to you? Yeah. Like, wow, that was so cool. Um, oh my gosh. Um, oh my goodness. That's a lot. Um, <laughs> I, I really loved, honestly, being able to do Beethoven this, this semester. Um, oh yeah, has been wonderful. But um, I'm a huge sucker for Dvorak anyway. So <laughs> when we were able to do the New World Symphony a couple years ago, that was a ton of fun. Um, wow, there were there has been a lot of really great selections. Oh, that's good. Um, I'm I'm glad to know that uh, you know that you're you're liking all the all the stuff we're doing now because I mean the big we're doing also another plug on this concert on April 28th we're doing the first movement of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony it's just something I think all the students need to have the experience playing you need to know how that looks when you hear it you know but uh, well um, I guess I haven't made the rounds totally about that but I'm afraid I don't want to I don't want to have to end this session before you get a chance to hear a little bit of the two pieces uh, of course, we have several chamber pieces on the program as well as the orchestral things. Uh, and so we're going to start off with the, uh, the ensemble playing just a little bit, a quartet, playing a little bit from the Dvorak Ameri It's known as the American Quartet because he wrote it here in the States. And uh, they're just going to play a little excerpt of what, uh, you know, that's the finale movement that they're, well, they're actually playing two movements at the concert, but they're just going to play a little bit of the finale, so I'll get out of the camera angle and let you hear.
<laughs> nice that the last word, huh? But, uh, yeah, so I, I thought we would do uh, the two samples we're giving you in, uh, in this order uh, because a string quartet's a fairly standard um, uh, idiom. And people know the sound of it. But uh, like Lacey was talking about, it's so much fun to be a part of chamber music in part because you don't get as many opportunities. And I think as far as the quality of sound, uh, now you'll hear a little bit of this quintet that uh, Dvorak wrote and you can hear the added depth when you, you add that bass into it. So they're just going to give us a, a very opening section of this uh, bass, uh, quintet with bass in F major. to me as, as hopefully you're viewing this is the interaction uh, among the players in, in chamber music and that's so vital and it reminds me of that classical aesthetic when the, when the quartet, string quartet was really developed as a genre. It was the idea very, very clearly with those folks with Haydn and Mozart and Beethoven that it was a conversation between four people and you could really, and in this case five, excuse me for leaving the bass out, but, um, you know, it is, it's, it's lots of interaction. And um, I think the other thing is, it, it kind of, it makes me think of why Dvorak is so effective, because he's so beautifully folksy. Mm -hmm. And he really, you, you get such a sense of, of not only the learned, it's, it's sort of like Mahler, it's the same thing. You get, you get highbrow structures and interesting uh, dynamics and so on, but there's a lot of folk simplicity to it. It makes it very listenable. Very well. So, well, folks, it's been a pleasure uh, talking with you, and I appreciate you taking extra time after a long rehearsal. Uh, and George McNally, thank you so much for being part of this and for helping them uh, kind of pass it on, you know, to the next generation. But we hope you've enjoyed this and would really encourage you all to come out and hear us on Wednesday, April 28th at 7 o'clock at Trinity Church. 
It's always inspiring to hear the perspectives and dreams of our young musicians as they carry the torch of classical music into the future. As a final reminder, the Long Bay Youth Symphony Spring Concert is Wednesday, April 28th at 7 o'clock at Trinity Church in Myrtle Beach. It will feature two of the musicians you just heard from, cellist Colin Scholl and bassist Lacey Tear, as well as bassoonist Aaron Neely as soloists with the Youth Symphony, plus the two Dvorak chamber works that you just heard excerpts from, the famous first movement of Beethoven's Symphony No. 5, and much more. To purchase tickets or live stream access, go to our website, longbaysymphony.com, or call us at 843-448-8379. Now on the horizon as we get into May, the Long Bay Symphony will be presenting something that's been wanting to do for a long time on Friday, May 7th at 7 o'clock at the Pelicans Baseball Stadium. We'll be doing a concert called Classical Mystery Tour, a tribute to the Beatles. Now the guest artists we have coming in to join us as the Beatles have been doing this sort of program with orchestras all across the country for many years and their mission is to recreate those songs the way they originally sounded particularly those later works that were part of uh, their, uh, the Beatles producer George Martin's work of adding orchestrational elements to the Beatles sound. Uh, I'm talking about say later tunes like Penny Lane, All You Need Is Love, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, all of that kind of thing. So we'll be recreating those great classic tunes at this event. Now to get tickets in this case uh, please approach the uh, Myrtle Beach Pelicans. You can either get on their website or give them a call. Now in addition, we have started up again uh, another venture that we had been doing in the fall and that is outdoor dinners with music, with live music at the Brentwood restaurant in Little River. Uh, so basically once a month on Wednesdays we've been doing these concerts. We had one that happened just recently and the next one we have is in May on May 19th Wednesday May 19th uh, it starts at 6 o'clock and the Brentwood offers a fixed price dinner and uh, of course that includes everything all the the entire meal and the music and to order tickets for that just call the Long Bay Symphony office again that's 843-448-8379 now we'll be doing them in June and presumably throughout the summer and into the fall hopefully as well. So uh, avail yourself of that opportunity to be in that lovely setting and hear some live music. Uh, it's just so encouraging to be opening up again and having these concerts uh, such as the Beatles and, and outdoor music. So keep your eyes peeled as we uh, get into spring and summer and COVID lifts more to be hearing and seeing more about the Long Bay Symphony and the Youth Symphony's activities.